Hello, and welcome to this introduction to Tempora Lite. My name is Jacob Legron, and I'm a software engineer here at Datadog. Now, this talk is about Tempora Lite, but before we get into that, I think it's helpful to have a better understanding of how we're leveraging Temporal at Datadog and what Datadog does. Uh, so Datadog is an observability platform that provides full visibility across your organization and allows everyone to have a shared understanding of your systems and the ability to immediately resolve problems when they arise. At Datadog, we care a lot about efficiently and safely releasing our software into production at scale. And over the last year, we've been investing in Temporal as a key component of our internal software delivery platform. So currently in production, we have Temporal workers for a variety of use cases, including data store operations, deployments, uh, chatbots, pull request lifecycle automation, and uh, source code changes, and so much more. So far, well over 100 individuals across tens of teams at, at Datadog have contributed to Temporal Worker code bases. And here we can see a breakdown of our Temporal activity executions by activity type and worker domain. Each unique color on this tree map represents a unique worker type, which is generally owned by one on-call rotation. And boxes are scaled relative to the total number of activity executions. So the top 10 workers account for about 99% of our activity throughput, but there are lots of lower volume use cases as well, which don't show up on this map, uh, which are nevertheless business critical. And here's a quick idea of our overall throughput. Right now we're executing about 3 million workflows per month and usage continues to grow rapidly. So as our usage has increased, of Temporal, uh, we've noticed some challenges developing against an operating Temporal day-to-day -day that played into our decision to invest in Temporal Lite. The first and most present for us today is that running workers locally during development can be extremely resource intensive. Uh, we run a Temporal server and a single node Cassandra on developer laptops in separate containers via Docker Compose. And developers typically build and run their workers in Docker Compose as well. This whole setup takes a long time to get running at the beginning of each development session, and it can take nearly as long to update on each code change. We also end up spending a lot of time debugging problems as a team that are very specific to this environment, like bumping up default memory limits for the Docker VM. Another pain point is automated integration testing, or sometimes lack thereof. Uh, we have a staging temporal cluster that folks generally use for manually validating changes end-to-end -end before merging their pull requests. Uh, but that comes with all of the shared staging problems like non-production-like dependencies or broken dependencies, and occasionally racing with other engineers to find a, a window for testing a change to a common piece of code. And the last point here is that we uh, do use temporal to deploy temporal. Um, I can dig into this a little bit more later, but using Temporal as the foundation for our deployment system does introduce some interesting continuous bootstrapping challenges. All right, so uh, before we dive into how Temporal Lite may help solve some of these challenges, and spoiler, they're not going to be solved by the end of this talk, um, I'd like to go over the Temporal server architecture at a high level. So a Temporal server consists of four independently scalable services. There's a uh, front-end gateway for rate limiting, routing, and authorization. There is a history subsystem, which maintains data about running workflows. A matching subsystem, which hosts queues for dispatching tasks to workers. And a worker service that runs some internal background workflows. Now, these temporal services can run independently or be grouped together into a shared process, uh, which allows you to run them on the same physical or virtual machine. And this is a, an option already present in upstream. And then, of course, there's also a database component, which provides storage for the system. Uh, we use Cassandra in our production clusters, but Temporal has a pluggable storage interface, which allows it to support other data stores like Postgres and MySQL as well. OK, so now that we have a high level view of the Temporal Server architecture, let's talk about Temporal Lite. Uh, Temporal Lite is a distribution of Temporal that is shipped as a single binary and runs in one process with no runtime dependencies. It accomplishes this via a custom storage driver that leverages SQLite. 
And it also takes advantage of the fact that the other temporal server components could already be configured to run within a single process. Uh, Temporalite is packaged as a Go binary, but also as a library, which we'll talk about more in a moment. So aside from minimizing runtime dependencies, uh, Temporalite's main features are that it supports storing all state in a single file. So you can easily fork your server state with a copy command or email or slack it to a teammate for help debugging. There is a in-memory mode, which is also supported pretty much for free as a result of using SQLite. And this makes it super easy to stand up and tear down temporary server instances. Uh, startup time is nearly instantaneous from a human perspective, which makes it really well suited for local development use cases. And the project can be imported as a Go library, which provides facilities for writing end-to-end -end tests using the normal Go testing framework, uh, or more advanced use cases like importing the temporal server as a Go library to make it possible to embed it as part of a larger application. And I did want to briefly touch on what the experience was like writing a custom storage driver for, into, for uh, Temporal. Um, our original motivation for this project initially was really just to write a storage implementation and learn more about Temporal's data model and other internals. Um, and we weren't necessarily expecting to have anything useful in the end. Um, but my main takeaway was that it was actually fairly straightforward. Temporal's data model is really concise considering the problem domain. And uh, the process mostly consisted of doing a copy paste of the MySQL driver code, plus an afternoon of chasing down errors and fixing up SQL statements in order to get a workflow to execute end to end. Uh, and we did eventually upstream the SQLite driver to Temporal Server, the Temporal Server repo a few weeks ago. And since then, we've been able to delete those 4,000 lines of code from Temporalite. Uh, and big shout out to the Temporal maintainers who were super helpful in reviewing and getting the SQLite driver code integrated into the Temporal test suite. So after we had something working and it proved out the usefulness uh, of Temporalite for some of our internal use cases, we decided to open source it. And uh, we did this primarily because we think it's useful and has a lot of applicability outside of Datadog. Um, we also think it's a great way to drive further alignment and engagement with the upstream Temporal community. And we've seen a lot of this already with Temporal maintainers and other community members around the project. Um, and we're really excited about this. And then uh, a major technical reason was to open source was that we wanted to move the SQLite driver out of the Temporalite code base and into upstream. Um, this is because the temporal storage interface is not necessarily completely stable. And um, moving this into the temporal server project allows us to deal with version upgrades much more easily because the uh, driver code is now being tested with each code change to temporal server and we can share some of that code review and maintenance burden with uh, the upstream maintainers more easily who are the experts after all um, okay so what's next for temporal light uh, we have a lot of ideas and plans um, so the the first thing is that we do have some work left to call the sqlite driver production ready and we're working with maintainers upstream to improve tests around this and uh, improve handling of some non-happy path scenarios in the driver code base, especially around lock contention. Uh, we also want to eventually bundle the temporal web UI into the temporal light binary. Um, Upstream is working on a version two of the temporal UI and a uh, backend gateway server, which is written in Go. And this should allow temporal light to eventually offer more than just the headless experience it does today. Uh, and then internally at Datadog, we're, we're working on integrating Temporalite more closely with our worker framework and uh, local dev and CI processes. Uh, we'd like to make it as simple and fast to run workflows end to end uh, in local dev and CI as possible. And we haven't forgotten that there is a unit testing framework for the Go SDK, um, but in the cases where we do want to write a true end to end test, uh, Temporalite is our, our planned solution for that. Um, and then temporal failover and federation testing scenarios are also important to us internally. Um, as we work on building out our operational capabilities around failover and, um, and replication between temporal clusters, 
we plan to use Temporalite to be able to quickly stand up servers in a variety of topologies and test different failure modes. Uh, and then I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but having an option of embedding Temporal in a, a larger application is really interesting, especially for deployments. Um, so since we depend on Temporal to deploy Temporal, it's important that we have break glass options available for running potentially complex operations in order to recover from temporal outages. And we don't want to have to duplicate the business logic for these operational workflows that have already been implemented with the temporal Go SDK in a completely different system, or do the work of hiding that we are using the Go SDK. Uh, so instead, we can use the Temporalite Go library to embed the temporal service alongside our worker code in a single binary uh, which can be run from a developer laptop or a remote host. Um, and then this is a little bit more aspirational, but we're also really interested in being able to run low dependency temporal servers in our edge environments. Um, and we're looking at this project called Lightstream, uh, which allows you to efficiently snapshot and persist SQLite state in blob storage like S3. So this would allow us to uh, run kind of very small servers at the edge, uh, which would still be able to recover from single node failures. All right, so that's enough talking. Let's do a quick demo. Um, so I mentioned Temporal Lite is available as a Go binary or a Go library. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the Go binary. So um, we can go, uh, go ahead and say uh, Temporal Lite start. And I'm going to provide the ephemeral flag. Um, so this is going to start up the server without any existing state, uh, completely from scratch. Um, and then in the second terminal window here, I'm just pulling every tenth of a second for uh, the status of the foo namespace. So you can see right now, um, I'm getting a connection refused error message, as you might expect, because I'm not yet running the temporal server. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start. And um, so now the error message has really quickly changed to the namespace foo does not exist. Uh, and this is because we are starting up without any um, existing state. So if I had previously registered uh, the namespace foo in, a, in, a, in my last development session, it would no longer be there. So uh, to deal with this, we provide an option from the CLI to pre-register namespaces. Uh, this works in ephemeral mode and uh, in file persistence mode as well. Um, so this is a little bit more convenient if you want to be able to uh, right away start um, registering a worker and pulling for work on a task queue within a namespace. Uh, so now we can see the namespace foo exists, and we're ready to go. Um, so uh, the other interface to Temporalite is using it as a Go library. So if we take a look at the Go doc, we have a the main package for Temporalite is uh, provides facilities for importing a server type and constructing it. Um, this is a little bit low level for most use cases. So we also provide a temporal test package which allows you to uh, really easily create a temporal server uh, within a Go test suite and actually run, uh, register your worker and, and run workflows end to end. Uh, so to take a look at what that looks like really quick, um, we can go over to this hello world package, which defines a single workflow and an activity and the workflow calls into the activity in order to return a response. Uh, so again, normally we would just write a, a unit test for this using the uh, temporal test uh, utilities that they provide. Um, but if we want to write in a true end-to-end -end test with a real temporal server, we can pull in the temporal test package. And uh, this is basically all the boilerplate that you need in order to instantiate a server, get a client, and register your workflows and activities. And then from there, we can actually write our test code that um, validates that we're getting back the response that we expected. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and break the test so we can see what it looks like when, uh, when you don't get back the right result. Um, 
So what's happening in the background is that we're standing up a full temporal server. Uh, when you use the temporal test package, then we'll automatically find open ports for you so that you don't need to worry about port collisions when you're running multiple temporal instances. Um, and now we get back our results. So we can see the log line from our tests. Uh, that what we got was not what we expected. And um, what's also nice here is we don't show any of the temporal server logs, which can be fairly noisy. But we can see uh, that we have access to the worker logs and to the temporal client logs that we used to actually start the workflow. Um, so that is the demo. Let's head back to the presentation. And um, that's it. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, if this sounds interesting, please check out our previous talk entitled Software Delivery Building Blocks at Datadog to learn more about how Datadog leverages Temporal as a key component of our internal software delivery platform. And please do reach out to me at Jay Legrone on the Temporal Community Slack if this stuff sounds interesting and you'd like to work on Temporal tooling and services full-time at Datadog. Thanks again.